All right, so we're back again with Soak It Up. My name is Maria Zapeda, and this month we have the same guy who was with us last month, that Joshua card. Brandstetter. Popular demand. <laughs> I hope that can hear you. What did you say? Back by popular demand. <laughs> well, we're back, and it's July. It's been a beautiful month. Independence Day was last week, so this week I think we're going to be talking a bit about U.S. history and Independence Day and kind of just honoring the holiday because this is such an amazing holiday. It's one of my favorites and just something that I feel like a lot of people take for granted. Like, it's just another day that we get off work or another day that we get to have fun but really what it's celebrating is truly amazing so I feel like we should really talk about it and learn to appreciate it because it's one of my favorites yeah it's always been one of my favorites and my my favorite subject in school was always history I loved doing U.S. history it was always really fun um I loved learning about just all the different events, obviously you, starting at the starting at Independence Day. Yeah, I remember when I was doing uh, American history in homeschool, high school. Yeah, uh, I told I, I was super into it too, and I was just wanting to do more and more research. And thought, you know, when I'm yeah. out of school and I'm an adult, I'm gonna go yeah. and read all oh. these big, I thought the same major thing. books and I was old like, publications yeah. and stuff. And now I tell myself, like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm getting there. Yeah, I thought the same thing because I did this one program in my home school. I did, we had this one program. It was so cool. It literally went from the very beginning, like, of the U.S. all the way to, mm -hmm. I think mine was, I think it went to, like, 2012 or something when I did it. So it was, like, everything. And I was like, man, this is so cool. But, you know, it couldn't get, like, as in-depth as I would like it to be because it had to go over everything. So I'm like, man, I want to get like different history books and history books about certain people and read those and just learn like yeah. a ton about history. Yeah. But I, I mean, I did some, but not as much as I would like to. I definitely, yep. yeah, this is a kind of, this is kind of reviving that. Like we should, I want to get some books now. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. So that's, um, that's kind of one of the cool things about something like Independence Day. If you take it seriously, because, uh, it, that's kind of what holidays are for, right? They yeah. remind you of things that are important in yeah. the long run, like, uh, you know, our liberty and where yeah. it came from and the founding fathers and, and what they stood for. And, you know, I was at a Independence Day celebration and the uh, Declaration of Independence was read. And I thought that was the coolest thing somebody's oh, yeah. done, at, you know, for Independence Day. That is really cool because it kind of brings it up. It's like this is not just another party this is not just another day that we have to you know be off work and have fun and stuff but this is you know we're doing this for a reason we're doing this to remember um something amazing that happened and some amazing people that gave their everything to make it happen and make the future generations have something that they didn't so yeah. that was really really cool what What's what? Who would your favorite founding father be? I think that's such a hard question, but if you could answer it, I like I like compiling favorites. So, <clears throat> so to me, I I already have two that up on that list. I think my favorite is Thomas Jefferson, because mm. I mean I think he was a really cool intellectual guy yeah. who. Uh, I mean, he probably gets a lot of credit for the fact that he wrote the de uh, largely wrote the Declaration of yeah. Independence, which I really like uh, about the guy. Uh, and then second to that is uh, James James Madison, and I like yeah. him. He he. I think if I remember correctly, he took a big role in writing the Constitution. So maybe that's what caused me to like them. They are they are both some of the most like. Um, kind of revolutionary in that they wanted the government not to be overbearing. They wanted the structure of the government so that the yeah. people would be in control of the government. Yeah. Um, they, they were very uh, uh, philosophical and intellectual about that. And I mean, those are some yeah. of the people who I really wanted to study more. And I, 
I haven't, I mean, I, I haven't read the, uh, the, uh, shoot, they've got this, uh, this whole series of articles and it, it's been so long since I've done any study. It's not coming to yeah. mind right now, but, um, they, they did some really cool writings and That's really uh, cool. Hamilton took part in that too, but I just like them a lot. Yeah. They were really, think, really cool. Yeah. I think Thomas Jefferson is my favorite. Yeah. I, it's such it's a hard It's hard not question. to say they George honestly... Washington, right? Because he's the father. <laughs> There were honestly like there was there are so many and like I don't know as much as I'd like to about most of them, but I feel like Thomas Jefferson is my favorite and I think I think he's he was the youngest one, wasn't he? He was the youngest. Oh, don't ask me that. I don't know, but I, I don't think know. he was pretty I don't know young, if yeah. I'm sure about that. I think he was in his 30s um during the revolution and I think I, he was one of the youngest ones, at least one of the youngest ones. I'm not sure if he was the youngest one, but but that's just really inspiring to be like that young and you know doing something that big. You know, I'm yeah, that big and I'm sure like I don't know if they thought of it like that. Like everyone's just trying to do their own thing and mm -hmm. do what they think is best, but now what however many years later they're, you know, looked up to as these great um incredible people who did something amazing and I don't know if they ever thought about that themselves as like, oh, we're doing this amazing thing or they're just like this is you know, what needs to be done. This is what the next thing is. Like, everyone they, does. I'm sure they must have thought about the weight of the importance of creating a whole new form of government, basically. Yeah. But I do like to look back and think, you know, maybe they didn't think about it that much. And then yeah. I say feel like, we're in kind of yeah. a, we could find ourselves in a crucial part of history ourselves. And we could that be really true. unhappy that we're in it because it's tough to be in a crucial part of history. Yeah. We can remember that, you know, when you're in a crucial part of history, you do some yeah. something important it affects a lot of people mm -hmm. and you have a lot of opportunity to do good yeah. things i feel like they had to have known like somewhat because if you go back and read some of their stuff like even the way that they write it out and some of the things that they say when they're writing it out they're like referring to the future and like this is you know they knew that they were doing that for the future so so they had to have at least um you know thought of it somewhat but yeah but maybe it was more of like this is our responsibility and not yeah we are great men of history yeah not like that like this like they knew that they were doing something that could change history but it's not like they were like you know we're we're great and this is what we're doing and yeah yeah what's one event oh gosh this is gonna be a hard question too what's an event in history that inspires you it's an event in history that inspires me i could harken back to like i love the uh revolution the the uh Scottish Re Revolution, uh, inspired by William Wallace. But if we're talking about America, um, I really like, I like, I think we have one of the coolest national anthems ever. And I think sometimes people don't always think about oh, that. Yeah. I have like a rudimentary understanding. Actually, we were going over that, uh, on Independence Day. And I, and, uh, so I know the story had something to do with a, uh, an American who was captured and, yeah. He he was in a war. I'm pretty sure he was Britain and the states, but I think I, I thought it was initially the uh, Revolutionary War, but uh, yeah. I think it was the War of 1812. At least that's what oh. I heard recently. But but I, I I like that um that we have a a national anthem that harkens back to an important yeah uh, event in our history. I, yeah. I guess that inspires me. But I love it because you know then you go to the fact that we set off fireworks and. Um, the, uh, the song talks about, or the poem talks about yeah. bombs bursting in air and stuff like yeah. that. And I find that pretty awesome. Yeah, even the fireworks are, that's for a reason, you know, it's something to remember that. I feel like, um, wasn't he like being, wasn't he being held captive in like one of the boats or something? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and they were uh, attacking some city harbor. Yeah. And he was. I think he, the harbor was being pretty well ravaged with, uh, yeah. and with he was cannonballs, and they were shooting off bombs, and and mm -hmm. basically basically declaring that you know we we didn't give up, we're still here all night long, and mm -hmm. and so that was inspirational to him, and he wrote that poem. Yep. And yeah. now it's uh, when the sun rose, the flag was still there. That's to someone that yeah. they made it our national anthem. Yeah, that's and now it really incredible. Us, so. Yeah. There's that, or just the American Revolution itself, and us. Yeah, it's uh, all. Yeah. corny but i mean it's really awesome that people, people could uh 
found a nation from such humble beginnings. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty incredible. I find it inspiring. I find all the founding fathers inspiring. Yeah. I love John Adams. He's just a, a really admirable, good family guy. And he had a great marriage. And he also was just a really cool founding father, too. Yeah. Just a, everything revolving around the the revolution and the founding of the country. I love it all. Yeah. Yeah, it's all pretty. I don't think I could just pick one event or one person or like it's I all mean, very. When when uh, America fought a war and ended slavery, that was inspiring. I love yeah, that. Yeah, see, that's there's another event that's amazing in and... the states. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love yeah. Booker T. Washington's uh, autobiography was really inspiring to me. He was yeah. a slave, and then he talks about his experiences yeah. and. Um, what he did to make such an influence on society and that's awesome yeah i mean if you dig into history, history like just you know there's so much history in the whole world but just u.s history there's so much there's so many people there's so many events that are just incredible to even think about like you think how could it even be real because it's just so incredible and so inspiring different people relatively recent yeah, a lot of it a lot is. Of other world history. Yeah. So you said it's one of your favorite holidays. Do you have a, a more favorite holiday, Christmas? <laughs> I, hmm, it would. I don't know. I think Thanksgiving maybe. Thanksgiving, yeah, Fourth of July. Nice. That's yours too, huh? Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I just love a holiday where we focus on being thankful as a people. Yeah. Like that's the sole or the primary purpose of it is to be thankful. And then you think yeah. about all the blessings, and I think. Thankfulness is just a core tenet of living a, living a good life, and so a holiday all about it, not just about turkey. Is, is <laughs> yeah, my, is, we is always – something that we always do is, like, you know, all day you're preparing the meal and everything because you have, you know, your big Thanksgiving dinner, but we'd always, you know, um, before we eat, pray, of course, and then we go around the table and – say each person take a turn and saying something that they're thankful for and I always thought that was really cool because it kind of gives recognition to that and how you know it makes you have to think what is something that I'm thankful for and a lot of the time we don't really think about that what we're thankful for we just think about what's annoying us or what's you know what you have to get better at right yeah we don't think about like the good things and it's so important to think about the good things because to have like a positive outlook and everything you can't just dwell on all the things that are messed up or the things that are not good but you have to think about what's good because there's always something and have you if, ever done gratitude journaling I think no that's, I did that for a little bit but it's hard to stay consistent in journaling but life's better yeah. when you're thinking about and talking about the things that you're thankful for yeah or praying about them just ha having it in your head and living grateful yeah and you can't you can't really be like a positive person if you're not at least sometimes thinking about the positive things in life you know mm -hmm. if you're just dwelling on the negative things it's it's just gonna make you a negative person yep um i so guess that's yeah. another example of the influence of holidays yeah it can make they can make a, a positive impact on on the world and on your life if they yeah. have a good purpose so yeah yeah for me for me it's thanksgiving too yeah, that's one of the best. I think Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, and Christmas are be my three tops. I don't know if I could pick one. Is Thanksgiving like your one favorite? Thanksgiving's my one favorite. I found okay. this thing I've wanted to do, where there's like a I want to have a box and write down thing like one thing we're thankful for, and offer it to the whole family, <clears throat> um, and everyone like put a paper in it, and then the next Thanksgiving year, on Thanksgiving Day. That would be so cool. Open that box and pull out the things. But I always wanted it to be a nice little box where it's like wooden and there's a cool slit in the top or something. Oh. And so because of that, I just, I I get around to Thanksgiving and I'm yeah. like, well, I don't have the box. So. Oh, but that would be so cool though. And yeah. to remember the next year what it was. I mean, you probably wouldn't remember. So that'd be so cool to be I able don't to think so. yeah. look out, look back at it. Oh, that's a good idea. You should do that. This year. <laughs> This year, for sure. So what's something... I know we were kind of getting a little off topic right there, but um, that was really hey, good. Hey, it's another American holiday, though. What? 
it's another American oh, holiday. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. great. Yeah, there are a lot of really great holidays. But um yeah, what's something this is change of subject, but what's something that motivates you? What motivates me? <clears throat> um I'm motivated by people probably in more difficult circumstances than me uh, accomplishing more than I could ever imagine accomplishing <laughs> because wow. yeah uh, that always puts your your position in perspective I guess um, I like listening to podcasts for one um, those things motivate me yeah people who are <clears throat> you know Navy seals and and significant uh, people talking about important things yeah. or reading uh, we were talking about Booker T Washington his uh <clears throat> his autobiography and his life really inspires me I guess and when I am involved in reading something like that that motivates me he's he's a really motivational figure to me yeah is there is there one certain person that you would say motivates you would it be him or would it just be like peop different people in general or like it would it would probably be him uh Sometimes I like to think of William Wallace because he was awesome, but in a more practical way, probably him. And then in a, in a more modern sense, somebody like Jocko Willink. Listen to that guy's podcast. He has a, yeah. a really cool podcast where he interviews you know people from the military and uh, just talks about really cool topics. And I think for a lot of people, a really good podcast motivates them. I mean, I know people who just, it's just music, too. Yeah, depending on... Yeah, different songs and stuff can be very motivating. Different people, I feel like that's a really good one, are very motivating. You know, you see them going after things and, you know, doing um, incredible things, even despite whatever circumstances they might be in, and just going after it. And that's a, what I feel like what makes a person really... Um, you know, someone that can motivate themselves and really go after things and get out of their comfort zone and go after, you know, whatever it is, whatever their dream is or whatever, um, despite whatever challenges they might have to pass or anything. And I, oh, what is someone, I was listening to a video the other day and I can't remember the guy's name, but... Is it like a historical figure? No. It's, it's not like historical it may be one day but um he was in a car accident and you know he was on, he was only 20 he was in a crazy crazy car accident um from a i think it was a drunk driver hit him in an intersection and t-boned him and his car went off the road and i didn't get to finish the video he's like an inspirational speaker now but he basically died for like seven minutes and then they revived him and it was crazy too because he was headed home from an event that he was at with his friends and his friend was behind him but they kind of got stopped at a light mm -hmm. so they didn't see the accident but they drove past it later and they were like Is that that's his truck like that's him so I guess they stopped and um he basically died for seven minutes before they revived him and at the hospital and they told him when he woke up I think he woke up a week later and they told him you're never going to walk again they didn't th they didn't know that he'd wake up they kind of um told his family he's going to be a vegetable he's not going to be able to do anything and he woke up a week later talking you know he could think and everything and they told him you're not going to be able to walk ever and I don't know how long it took him but you know he had so many broken bones and like crazy crazy it was crazy accident um and so I don't know how long it took him but he's walking again he's a motivational speaker now and that's just so inspiring because you never know what's gonna come your way as long as you keep fighting as long as you keep pushing you keep your motivation it's, it's something great is gonna come out of it yeah I think it uh it depends on what, you know, what is your purpose for doing it, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, I mean, you never want something that, that, that something like that to happen no, to yourself. No, of course not, no. No, but it can definitely be, I mean, somewhere, I never can quote scripture very, very accurately, but somewhere it says that, uh, that God can work out 
can work out all things for good for the for those that love him. Mm-hmm. So I mean, a terrible thing can turn out to be uh, of great use. Yeah, that's really so. He's a, a motivational speaker. Do you think you'll ever meet him? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that would be pretty cool, but I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I mean, I f- it's possible. Gosh, what was his name? I think his name. I think his name is Hal Elrod. I think. If you ever meet him, you better hope you got it right. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that was what his name was. But yeah, so there are a lot of motiv- motivating people out there. What's something that you would say pushes you out of your comfort zone? Oh, what pushes me out of my comfort zone? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. What is my comfort zone? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if I would have an socializing answer Socializing a lot, I mean, naturally, I think, pushes me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm comfortable in the places where I'm naturally social, you know, going yeah. to work and stuff like that. I think talking to people who I don't know about important topics, that pushes me out of my comfort zone. If I want to That's a go pretty good answer, wow. Talk about yeah. God, or if I'm like, there's some sort of important topic in, in the culture that I think is worth talking about but you know yeah. I don't know somebody very well and I happen to be in a position where I can talk about that yeah that's probably one of the most uncomfortable that, things that's a very good answer yeah so I think we're going to wrap it up thank you guys so much for watching and if you can just do something that's going to push you out of your comfort zone whatever it is for you it's different for everyone um But whatever it is for you, just do something that's going to push you out of your comfort zone. And we'll catch you guys all next month. So you guys have a great rest of July and happy Independence Day. Oh, now I feel challenged. Thank you. (laughs) Do something, Josh, that's going to push you out of your comfort zone.